Thank you, and greetings to you all. The Universal Declaration of Human Rights, adopted 64 years ago, came in reaction to the terrible events of the prior three decades, when totalitarian ideologies worked to destroy human freedom and dignity. Common targets for these totalitarian systems were the home and family, for the dictators understood quite correctly that their schemes to smother liberty and human personality required the elimination of these basic human bonds. Accordingly, the architects of the Universal Declaration crafted Article 16, of which Clause 3 reads, the family is the natural and fundamental group unit of society and is entitled to protection by society and the state. Clause 1 of Article 16 also affirms that men and women of full age have the right to marry and to found a family. From these passages, we derive the phrase natural family and its grounding in the marriage of woman to man. How did the word natural become a modifier to family in this important declaration? Study of the legislative history of Article 16 reveals the driving influence of two men, René Cassan of France, a specialist in international law, and Charles Habib Malik, ambassador from Lebanon to the United Nations. Cassan himself was Jewish, Malik, a Greek Orthodox Arab. Both, however, had been influenced by the recent flowering of Christian democratic ideals in the immediate period after World War II. As Casson explained, individual rights and liberties must be understood as embedded within social groups and bonds, such as family, household, vocation, city, and nation. Among Malik's tasks at the United Nations was to serve as rapporteur, or secretary, of the Commission on Human Rights. In his minutes covering debate on Article 16, Malik explained his own views on the family, given here in the third person. Malik maintained that society was not composed of individuals, but of groups, of which the family was the first and most important unit. In the family circle, the fundamental human freedoms and rights were originally nurtured. He also contended that the family was endowed with inalienable rights, rights which had not been conferred upon it by the caprice of men. In the end, Malik's ideas won out. The power of the term natural family also derives from the sciences, the social sciences, and the natural sciences. Regarding child well-being, for example, the common lesson taught by social science research over the last four decades is this. Children living with their two natural parents in a married couple home are most likely to live healthy, happy, and enriching lives and to grow into good citizens. Any variation from this model raises the probability of negative outcomes. Some might reply that the natural family, defined more completely as the union of a man and a woman through marriage for sharing love and joy, propagating children, providing their moral education, building a vital home economy, offering security in times of trouble, and binding the generations that this actually is a religious concept. And it, in a way, this is true. Certainly, the great monotheistic faiths, Judaism, Christianity, Islam, understand the family to be rooted in the creation events told in Genesis, that is, in the law of nature and nature's God. And so, with the affirmations and truths of history, science, and religious faith as guides, I am pleased to declare open this World Congress of Families 6. Thank you for being here.